You know, recently we installed this solar tube up here to give us extra light in the kitchen, and it really works great. However, the downside is at night, we don't have a light in here. We did away with the fixture that was up there, but I have got a solution. This light kit is going to be installed right up here inside the solar tube. First thing I need to do is to measure up and establish exactly where the light's going to be installed. And what we need to do is to measure up seven and a half inches from the bottom of the tube here. And we're going to mark it right here because that's where we're going to drill our pilot hole and that's where we're going to attach the light fixture. Now our next step is to drill our pilot hole up here. This is going to be a reference point so we can get up in the attic, which is our next step, and drill a bigger hole for the wires to go through for our light fixture. Now you can see our pilot hole right here, and we're going to be needing to have a bigger hole here for the wires to run through, so we're using a hole saw with the drill, and it'll go right on through there. Well now we have the perfect hole for this coupler. We can just slip it right through there. Only problem is when you let go, it's going to fall off. But we've got a trick that'll take care of that. Just take a piece of tape, put it on the back of the coupler, and now the tape is going to hold it in place while we go back downstairs and feed the wires through. Now our next step is to feed the wires up through the little coupler here, which is going to be a fairly easy thing to do, a little tedious, but I can attest to the fact that the solar tube really does bring in a lot of light here. I may be able to get a tan just for working on this. Now once we get the wires fed in there, Connection is going to be pretty easy because the connector itself has threads and that sticks out. And there's a little nut inside on the bracket here. It has threads. And if the nut on the ladder can get all of that lined up and get the nut turned down finger tight, we got it made. Now we're going to get our current for the new light fixture from this box up here where the old light fixture was. Anytime you're working on electricity, you want to make sure that there's no current to the circuit you're working on. Be sure that everything you do complies with the local code, including in some places getting a licensed electrician. We're allowed to do this. We just want to do it with, with uh, safety and care in mind. Now we've got our wires up into the attic and we want to run it through this flexible conduit here all the way over to the box there. But before we run them through the conduit, we want to put this little plastic piece in there. It's a little plastic sleeve and it's an anti-short bushing. And the reason it's there is so that you won't have metal rubbing against the insulation on the wires and maybe cause a short. Right now, we'll just push it on through and it's going through real easily. Should be coming out the other end any minute now. Once we get it all the way through there, we need to attach the end of this to our coupler over here. All right, now we need to slide the flexible conduit into the coupler, but first I'm going to take off our tape. It did a really good job. It's a good trick for you to remember. When we slide this in, we have screws on this bracket here that will hold it in place. Now the first thing we need to do is be sure our wires and the flexible conduit are going to reach over here, and they do just barely. Now we're just going to run these wires through the conduit connector, and it screws right into the flexible conduit. Now we need to take a screwdriver and a hammer and knock out this plug down here. And it's really a good idea to use an old screwdriver when you do this. Now this should fit right down in the opening we've got here. Now the connector that we poked through the hole that we made when we knocked out that plug is sticking down through here. It's threaded and a few more turns on this little nut down here and it's going to be good and snug. I think that's got it. Now for the wiring. We've already got the two neutral wires or white wires put together with a wire nut and we've got the green wire up here on a grounding screw. Now we'll get the two black wires together. They're the hot wires and we're using a wire nut to hold them together. Now we'll just push everything back up into the box, put the cover back on, and our wiring is done. Now this little device here is a heat sensor. It's peel and stick. We just take the backing off and then put it in place right up here, stick it to the inside wall. And what this does, if it should overheat inside here, it'll automatically shut off the current so you don't have a fire hazard. 
Now for the final step. We're going to answer that question, how many super handyman does it take to screw in a light bulb? Now for safety's sake, you don't want to have more than 100 watts up in here. But actually, you don't need more than that because of the reflective quality inside this tube. It's really great. Well, now the sun's gone down and our solar tube is off duty, so to speak. So we wonder if we have really done something that will solve the problem. Hey, I think that looks really great.